Watching the Academy Awards this year, it felt like a foregone conclusion that Leonardo DiCaprio would win for his chilling, bison-chewing performance in The Revenant. Not because his performance was so great, but because after six nominations, everyone agreed he was due for a win. Sometimes it seems like the Academy gives Oscars to reward a body of work more than a particular performance, or as an attempt to correct overlooking past performances. You know, that's just like... Uh your opinion, man. Because of this, it often feels like the actor didn't win for the movie they should have. Here are Screen Rant's 10 actors who won Oscars for the wrong film. Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart By the time Jeff Bridges won an Oscar for playing washed-up country star Bad Blake in 2010's Crazy Heart, he'd had a career that had spanned five decades and several classic roles. He'd received four nominations prior to this, but none of these were for his most iconic role of all time. I dig your style too, man. The whole cowboy thing going. Comedies are often overlooked by the Academy. There's no denying that The Big Lebowski would not be the cult favorite it is today were it not for Bridges' hilarious performance as the film's lead. I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. So he may have won for being Bad Blake, but Jeff Bridges will always be the dude to us. And, and shit, man. I'm just the crazy slut with a dead husband. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence for Silver Linings Playbook 2012 was a breakout year for Jennifer Lawrence. She picked up Katniss's bow and arrow for the first Hunger Games film and picked up an Oscar for Silver Linings Playbook. While she charmed her way into mainstream America's heart, more serious film fans already knew her for the dark indie hit Winter's Bone. At 20 years old, Jennifer gave an unflinching performance as a young woman trying to keep a roof over her dysfunctional family's head. Give the Academy credit for going off the beaten path and giving Lawrence a nomination, but she was still the new kid in town, and the award went to the more established Natalie Portman for Black Swan. The on the scene. <laughs> oh. Christian Bale for The Fighter It's no secret that Christian Bale goes full tilt into any role he plays. He became known for his physical transformations, and Bale took home gold for his role as a drug-addicted boxing coach in The Fighter. But being gaunt and twitchy wasn't nearly as impressive as what he did with the Patrick Bateman character for American Psycho 10 years prior. Bale shed his child star persona to play this pumped up narcissistic psychopath to perfection in a film that was probably a little too out there for the Academy. I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. Are you not entertained? Russell Crowe for Gladiator. If Titanic taught us anything, it's that the Academy likes to reward box office success. It seemed like this was the case in 2001 when Gladiator won Best Picture and Russell Crowe took home the Oscar for his lead role as Maximus. Crowe did nail some intense scenes in this epic movie, but it was primarily an action hero role which came between nominations for two performances widely considered to be much stronger demonstrations of his talent. The Insider in 2000 and A Beautiful Mind in 2002. Right. Uh, Alright, well so it was a real quiet night. BOOM! <laughs> <laughs> Denzel Washington for Training Day. Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington should probably just swap Oscars. In the year that Crowe won for Gladiator, Washington was snubbed for his awesome performance as Reuben Carter, a boxer who was wrongfully imprisoned for almost 20 years. Having seen the truth, he can't turn his back on me! They both found themselves in the race again the following year, when Washington beat out Crowe's beautiful mind performance with his over-the-top, dirty cop role in Training Day. Damn, boy! That's what I'm talking about, Jake! Jennifer Connelly for A Beautiful Mind Crow was about the only major player in A Beautiful Mind who didn't take home gold that year. Ron Howard won Best Director, and Jennifer Connelly won Best Actress for playing his wife. Connelly did an admirable job playing Alicia Nash through the decades, but the intensity level never came close to what she achieved in Requiem for a Dream two years earlier. Her brave depiction of addiction shocked viewers who still saw her as the little girl from Labyrinth, and established her as an actress with chops and longevity. Al Pacino for Scent of a Woman Al Pacino delivered Oscar-nominated performances in such modern classics as The Godfather, The Godfather 2, Serpico, Dog Day Afternoon, and Glengarry Glen Ross, so it may surprise you to learn that the only one he actually won for was The Scent of a Woman. Sure, the blind, retired army lieutenant gave us Pacino's trademark hoo but the hammy performance hasn't aged nearly as well as his more subdued Michael Corleone. You're my older brother, and I love you, but don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. I have my son. I went out swinging and no man can say I didn't. Morgan Freeman for Million Dollar Baby It seems like the Academy has a soft spot for boxing films. In 2005, Million Dollar Baby nearly swept all the major categories, which meant a Best Supporting Statue for Morgan Freeman. A decade has passed and most people probably can't quote a single line from this film, or even recall that Freeman narrated it. Yet his narration and character from The Shawshank Redemption are forever etched into the consciousness of the millions who hold that film close to their heart. Hope 
and drive a man insane. It's got no use on the inside. Red was the guy who could get it for you, and Freeman definitely delivered. Hello? Um, enough with the trick plays, Bert. Run the dang ball. Sandra Bullock for The Blind Side. In 2009, Sandra Bullock gave an impressive performance as a woman who adopts a homeless African-American boy in The Blind Side, earning herself an Oscar nod from the Academy. As good as she was, the film was mostly carried by its emotionally manipulative movie of the week narrative, whereas a film like Gravity really depended on Bullock's performance to carry us through. It was essentially a one-woman show in front of a green screen, and Bullock brought her best to her role in Gravity, while The Blind Side already feels dated. Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant Ah, uh, we just had to mention Leo. The trophy eluded DiCaprio for so long that it became a running joke and internet meme. Most of the press around The Revenant was about the lengths Leo went to for this role, and how it all seemed like the actor was just clawing his way towards Oscar glory. But by putting himself in these real harsh conditions, it would seem that the role required more reacting than actual acting. The character of Hugh Glass didn't feel as fully realized as some of Leo's past work, particularly What's Eating Gilbert Grape, the film that earned Leo his first Oscar nomination at 19. As Arnie, a mentally disabled teenager, DiCaprio created a character that was funny, tragic, and heartfelt, whereas Glass was just cold. Oracle in the water. So what do you think of our choices? Were these Oscar wins really merited? Which stars do you think won an Academy Award for the wrong film? Give us your feedback in the comments section, and if you haven't already, click subscribe to get more great Screen Rant videos like this one.